because the easiest way to understand the system is to compare it to something you're already familiar with. Mm -hmm. So think about toilets in your house. I mean, you put waste in there and then you hopefully want to get that waste out. You flush the toilet and then it goes out to the big sewer pipe, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what the lymph nodes do. They just flush the waste out. Well, imagine if the toilets in your house stop working. Mm. Well, I wouldn't want to be in your house, right? And then that's what happens to your body. So basically, your cells are living in their own waste. Yeah. And you're going to get sick. I'm going to tell you that right now. Something's going to go wrong. It, you know, but your body is trying to heal and protect you and adapt. And if it knows your toilets are broken, it's going to try to find another way to get that waste out. Mm -hmm. And if the lymph doesn't work that great, it'll push it more into the veins of the body as best it can. But the lymph dumps into the veins, which we'll get into later. So you overburden the other toilets of the body, which are your skin is one. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people get issues with the skin because the skin bleeds the toxins and waste that can't get out through the lymph. And then the other one is your liver and then it's your poop and it's your pee and it's your breathing. So you're going to try to detox other ways, but eventually those are going to hit an end point too. And then they're overburdened. Then all of a sudden you get symptoms that won't go away. Well, Perry Nicholson, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. It is such a pleasure to be speaking with you right now. And I absolutely can't wait to um, hear everything you have to say about what you do and the lymphatic system, which is um, something that we're going to dive into today. So first of all, a massive, massive thank you for being on here. Um, how are things for you today? How are things your end? Oh, well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to be on the show. I'm very excited to be here and things are great. I, you know, life is life is grand. Yeah. Um, you were just saying how you love to teach and the lymphatic mm. system is something that you're so passionate about. And I have to say, it's something that I think everyone can see from um, just looking at your work, looking at the content that you put out there. I just feel like teaching everything that you teach is just it's just a passion and it's just something that you're willing to do over and over again um, mm -hmm. daily and I just I really get that from you oh that's wonderful I'm so glad that comes across I I love it it's yeah. a, a, I consider it just a huge part of my life you know every day you know, yeah. I uh, love to teach about the lymphatic system for sure I mean that's all the systems in the body I love, but that's the one that's at the top of the list. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, I when I was uh, looking over your content, I was kind of binging your um all of your videos in the last week, and um, I loved a particular podcast. There was a gentleman who who asked you, um, so you know, how would you describe yourself? Like, what do you what do you do? Um, so you're a, you're a chiropractor, like that's where you came from, and you were just like, yeah, but. I don't like to be put in a box. You're like, I don't like to say that I'm a chiropractor. I'm, I can be anybody. Like if a patient comes in and they have a problem, I can be who they need me to be at that point. So you're like, just, just I don't like to be put in a box. And I really liked that. I think that was very good. Do you still feel that way? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When everybody asks me, you know, what, what's your background? What do you do? Uh, <laughs> I hate that question because I don't have an answer. Yeah. Really. Right. I mean, it's, it's sort of, whatever I need to do in the moment I'm in to help the person that I'm with basically, yeah. you know, it's because yeah, one thing I've learned a lot over the last several years is the power of words and the power of language, mm -hmm. not, not just the words, but how you say them even more so honestly. And uh, so when you say something like chiropractor, people automatically go into this file folder of, their own experience with it, first of all, or what they've heard somebody else tell them about chiropractic. And I pretty much guarantee you hundred percent, you're not, you're not going to describe what I do yeah. under that banner. There's a lot of stuff in there. You know, I don't even have a name, honestly, for the stuff that I do because it's a little bit of everything, yeah. honestly. And it yeah. changes what I do changes on the person that I'm with and the moment I'm in. Mm. And that's really important for people to understand because they want me to give them, you know, kind of like standard answers to 
how you can help this, how you can help that. And I really can't give an answer because I need to know more about you. I didn't know about your life because that's what's different about your body compared to someone else's body is how you've lived your life up until now because the program has to be tailored to that. I would never do the same program to the same two people. I'm not going to get the same results. I'll stand by that one forever. Right. Um, so something I've always been curious to ask you, and now I can, which is great. Um, <laughs> when, when, with, with everybody who comes in to see you, um, mm -hmm. you're the lymph guy. So do you find that pretty much everybody who comes into you has some sort of lymphatic system issue. Would you say that? Yes. Yeah, right. I do all okay. the time. My running, my running joke, but I'm not joking is that everybody has a lymphatic system problem. They just don't know it yet. Right. right. So the prevalence is very high. <laughs> now how much of a role it's going to play is the difference, mm. but I know I'm going to find an issue there because most people have never done anything intentionally to take care of it or optimize it. And that's the difference, right? So it's just neglect from uh, no awareness that you need to be taking care of it, mm -hmm. right? Because you can't control something until you become aware of it. And if you're standing in front of me asking me for help, I already know it's an issue because you don't get to my door unless you've been through a lot. Most people that I see, I'm not the first place to visit. I'm typically the last one. After you've tried a lot of different approaches and many different types of therapies that can be helpful for a lot of people, but for some reason they weren't for you. Uh, maybe it was just not the right time for it or the right combination of it or something was getting overlooked. And um because of that, one of the things that I know is that most people, 99.9% .9 of them, when I've asked them, has anybody ever talked to you about your lymphatic system or do you know what that system is? Everybody says no. So I automatically know I need to take a look at it. Now, it doesn't mean that that's the only cause of your problem. Sometimes it is, but it will be a factor in everything else that you're trying to do. So I check it regardless, because if you have a system, lymphatic system that's working great, well, that's awesome. I love it. Fantastic. But we're going to make sure. And if you don't have one that's not working great, we're going to find that out too. So either way, here's the cool part. You win regardless, because if it's good, we're going to keep it that way. If it's not good, well, we're going to make it a little bit better than where it was, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's just the aha moment of, holy cow, nobody ever talked to me about that system. And that was the same for me but yeah. when I got into it many, many years ago, which I'm sure we will when we talk more about the, my story and about the lymphatic system. So basically anybody who's listening to this is probably the lymphatic system is likely something that they haven't heard much about. Um because that's just the way it is out there at the moment. It's such a neglected um, system and people just don't tend to talk about it, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, basically uh, the reason why this episode is so important is because um, people need to be aware of it because it's just as important as the other systems, because you can't just say one system is less important than another. So your cardiovascular system, your skeletal system, one of those systems that doctors love to talk about and there's so much awareness about um, the lymphatic system is up there, but people don't talk about it. So just quickly, while I'm on this, mm. before we go into your story, um, why do you think it's such a neglected system? Why don't people talk about it? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. I get that asked a lot and it blows my mind every day of <laughs> why they don't talk about it more in the medical community. It's kind of coming around now. And one of the reasons is because people are seeing, holy cow, when you work on that system, I feel so much better. And then, then word spreads and then doctors are like, huh, well, maybe I should look into this a little bit more. And then later we'll talk more about how the lymphatics make a difference in your brain health. And that's one of the reasons why it's really coming around because they're seeing 
what a role it plays in uh, the health of your your brain and what they call some neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and brain fog and all sorts of stuff like that. But I want to cycle back to something that you said that I was really happy to hear is that you talked about different systems and you mentioned that they're all important. You know, they all play a role and they never work by themselves. So if you follow me for any period of time, I'm going to say this phrase all the time, like weekly. I put it up as a weekly reminder because I always have new people following me. And it's that no system in the body ever works alone. It never gets injured alone and it never heals alone. There's no such thing as an isolated injury in the body. And there's no such thing as isolated healing. That means that everything tries to pitch in and carry the load and help you as best it can so you don't suffer as much as you could because it can always be worse. Unfortunately, and at least in the Western medicine perspective, that's exactly what we do is that we isolate things down to one cause. Very rarely is that the case, <laughs> if ever. And we have all these specialists like my cardiovascular specialist, my ear, nose, and throat specialist, you know, my uh, hormone specialist, my gut specialist. And I'm like, that's great, but you do realize that all those body parts talk to each other in the real world, right? <laughs> they don't know that there's supposed to be a specialty or something. And the lymphatic system is really neglected and overlooked unless you fall into a certain category. Then you'll usually say, ah, you might want to look at lymphatics. Otherwise, nobody really pays attention to it. And we're realizing in medicine that that's a big mistake because the lymphatic, if it has an issue, can lead to pretty much anything you could possibly imagine in the body, especially for chronic disease and autoimmune disease issues. But the two places that we mostly pay attention to the lymphatic system, and I'll explain what that system is in a moment is when you have what's called lymphedema. And lymphedema is where you'll have a certain body part, usually one, like an arm or a leg. Sometimes you can have more than one, but it's not common. And it becomes abnormally swollen and enlarges with a lot of fluid. It looks like edema. And that's because the body's lost the ability to remove the fluid that's there to get it out. And the lymphatic system's job is to do that. Some of the cases that you might see that in are women who've had breast removal surgery, implant or explant, or they've had cancer. They have to remove what they call lymph nodes, which are basically many tiny little mini toilets inside of your body that flush out waste. And when you remove those, you lose the ability to let fluids flow out the way they should, and then they backflow, and then the arm stays swollen. So that's case number one. And the other one is when you have cancer, because then they say, ah, you know, it can spread through the lymphatic system. And that's true, but it can spread through all systems through the blood flow. But the lymphatic system's job is actually to kill cancer cells every day so you don't get it. <laughs> that's one of its primary jobs. So let's talk about the system, and I'm going to give you an analogy in a moment and tell you why I think it's the most important system, even superior to your nervous system. So it is part of your immune system, right? And that's a really important system because that's the one that keeps you alive and not dead. Anything that tries to take you out, the immune system kicks into gear. When you get a cut, when you have surgery, when you're under stress, when you get any type of invasion in your system, your immune system kicks into gear. That's what inflammation is. It's an immune system response, actually. And the lymphatic system is the killer system of the body. So when stuff comes in, like a bacteria, a parasite, a virus, um, any kind of um, cancer cells, basically I say anything that you don't want inside of your body to get out, that system is the primary one to do it. And those nodes, you have about 600 or 700. Each one tries to kill stuff one after the other. Mm -hmm. And those nodes are like many barcode scanners in their grocery store. So when, they, when you scan something, it tells the, the register what it is, like if I'm buying bread or soap. Right. 
And that's what that's what they do for your immune system. So they tell your immune system what's here, what you need to kill it. So it's really important. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest things that it does is that removes metabolic cellular waste from inside of your body. So whenever you have injury to the body, when you damage a cell, that has got to get out because you have to make new ones, right? That's waste. And the lymphatic system does that. And whenever you have cells that die every day, because they're supposed to, that's called mm -hmm. aging, but then you make new ones. So you can go harder, faster, stronger, longer, and live a more resilient life. That stuff's got to get out. And the lymphatic system is the big conduit. Right? Yeah. So think about it for a moment. What if that didn't, what if that stopped? First of all, if it stopped, you would be dead in two days. That's incredible. But what if it kept working, but it didn't work as well? And maybe it stopped working maybe 20%. 80% works well, 20% doesn't. You're not going to feel it right away, mm -hmm. but you're going to feel it year after year after year. And then one day you have this condition where yesterday you didn't. Yeah. What's yep. up with that? Like, why was I good yesterday and today I'm not? It didn't just pop up out of nowhere. It just feels like it, right? Yep. And, yeah, then, and, and so I know just, yeah, there's an underlying issue. Yeah, right? and just and just to kind of put in there, just even the thought of what you're describing right now, when you're saying, you know, that that is, if it's not if it's not working like 100 percent efficiently, that toxins can build up over years and years, and just even the thought of that is just really kind of like wow, it, it just makes you want to do something about it straight away, like. Um, just even talking about that you're just like oh, God, I don't want that in my body like I want to get it out um, but yeah that's that was my thought continue please yeah yeah it's exactly right so I tell people I've mentioned many toilet I'm going to give you another analogy later yeah. because the easiest way to understand the system is to compare it to something you're already familiar with mm -hmm. so think about toilets in your house I mean you put waste in there and then you hopefully want to get that waste out you flush the toilet and then it goes out to the big sewer pipe right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what the lymph nodes do. They just flush the waste out. Well, imagine if the toilets in your house stop working. Mm. Well, I wouldn't want to be in your house, right? And then that's what happens to your body. So basically, your cells are living in their own waste. Yeah. And you're going to get sick. I'm going to tell you that right now. Something's going to go wrong. It, yeah. you know, but your body is trying to heal and protect you and adapt. And if it knows your toilets are broken, it's going to try to find another way to get that waste out. Mm -hmm. And if the lymph doesn't work that great, it'll push it more into the veins of the body as best it can. But the lymph dumps into the veins, which we'll get into later. So you overburden the other toilets of the body, which are your skin is one. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people get issues with the skin because the skin bleeds the toxins and waste that can't get out through the lymph. And then another one is your liver, and then it's your poop, and it's your pee, and it's your breathing. So you're going to try to detox other ways. But eventually, those are going to hit an endpoint too, and then they're overburdened. Then all of a sudden, you get symptoms that won't go away. And Jane, but the so, lymphatic system yeah. is the number one yeah. system because if that goes down, the other ones have an overburden for them, right? right? So it's part of your immune system. And we know that people have these autoimmune disorders, chronic disease. That's an immune system problem, mm -hmm. right? But the immune system works directly with your nervous system, so they go together. Now, it's also part of your cardiovascular circulatory system, and that's the one that many people don't talk about. And to me, I think it's almost as important because what happens is the lymphatics work directly with the blood flow. So when the lymph travels through the body, and here's the cool thing, you have about 15 liters of lymphatic fluid in your body, and you have five liters of blood. Wow. So you tell me which one nature thinks is more important. Well, lymph, right? Yeah. Yep. But the lymph flows into the blood via the veins. And then it goes back out again. So it makes this circulatory loop. It's the same fluid. It just changes names basically, mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. happens. So if you have a lymphatic system issue, you're going to have a blood flow issue. And if you have a blood flow issue, I'm going to tell you right now, you are not going to heal from an injury. 
And if you do, it ain't going to last long <laughs> because you're choking off the basic uh, supply chain of life, which is blood flow, because the veins and the arteries work together too. Mm -hmm. So if the lymph has an issue, then the vein has an issue, and eventually you're going to have an artery issue, and then stuff gets backed up everywhere, and you become toxic to yourself. But like I said before, here's the thing is that it's slow over time and you don't notice it, mm -hmm. right? People typically only notice things when they get, oops, ouch, it hurts. Yeah. We ignore all these other signs and symptoms that come on up, right? Yeah. And then that's the body telling you, uh, I'm trying to take care of something here and I'm doing the best I can. You need to listen a little closer as opposed to just ignoring them. So it's a it's the sewage system of the body, and that's the critical part of healing because you don't want to live in your own waste. Now, the other analogy that I use is a as a fish tank. And so this my is my program, favorite one. <laughs> it's it's Go ahead. mine too, honestly, because I as soon as I saw it, I went, "Oh my goodness, that makes a whole lot of yeah, sense." Aha, sense. I get it, right? And that's why my program is called Body Aquarium, Lymphatic Mojo. So let's think about an aquarium. It's, it's such a wonder. I love talking about this. I get so excited. Let's think about a beautiful fish tank that's in your home. And you've got all sorts of different types of fish. Well, that, those are your cells. And you have all different types of cells. You've got trillions of cells. So basically trillions of fish. And they're living in water. Well, your cells live in liquid too. It's what's called an interstitial fluid. That's the fluid that the cells come around in, all right? And it's mostly water. And lymphatics are mostly water. And blood is mostly water, like 90%. So here's a health tip. If you're dehydrated, you're already going to get sick. And if you're dehydrated, you're not going to get well, no matter what kind of magical exercise program I put you on. It ain't happening because you're not giving your body the fundamental ingredient it needs to function. It's going to function, but then it's not going to function as well as you wanted to. And that means you're going to stay sick. So hydrate yourself. That's number one, right? So all these different systems end up working together inside of that tank. And you've got what? You've got some rocks and you've got coral and you've got all these cool castles. But the fluid looks beautiful in there because you have a filter system that keeps it that way. Up in the corner, you have this thing that's like constantly doing what? Sending bubbles out and moving the water, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because if you don't move the water, what happens to the water? It becomes stagnant. And you ever seen stagnant water in nature? What, what's in that water? Disease. And animals know not to drink from it, right? Well, that's what happens inside of you. And then, but underneath that fish tank, you see where the magic happens. It's all that piping, filter after filter and pipe after pipe. You just don't see it. But what happens if that filter system underneath stops working or doesn't work that well? What happens in the tank? Well, nothing initially. But in a few days later, what do you start to see? Man, I, you know what? That water just doesn't look the same. And what's, mm. this, what's this stuff growing on the side of my glass? Well, that's bacteria and toxins. They call it biofilm. And you have biofilm inside of you as well. And then when water stops circulating and stuff like that, then oxygen content goes down. Please remember that. Yep. Oxygen goes down. And when oxygen goes down... All those other things that you don't want, bacteria, parasites, fungus, all those things love that environment. That's like party time. They're going to thrive. They're going to come out and they're going to start to eat things. And guess what they're going to eat? You is what they're going to eat. Your cells are what they're going to eat, right? But listen, the, the fish still have to live in that water and the fish still poop. So the fish are pooping all the time just like your cells. Your cells poop every day. That's called metabolism. That's called an energy cycle. You need that because if you don't make energy, you're dead, right? 
So you're always living in your own waste and fish are always living in their own waste. So now they're living in their own waste and there's no filter system, but we keep feeding the fish, right? And when you put the food in the, into the tank, then what are you making? More waste. Well, that's what happens with humans when they try to eat all this food into a system that's already full of muck. I call it muck. And you're like, but I'm eating really, really healthy. I'm like, that's great. But guess what? You're still living in your own poop. You got to get rid of that first. Otherwise, nothing's going to work. And if you ever looked in that tank and you see a fish struggling to breathe, they're like this. like, <laughs> Well, they're not dead yet, but they're not functioning at optimum. That's the way your cells are. So they can't get oxygen. And listen closely. When you have low oxygen in the body, you will have pain somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you will not get rid of it until you start to restore the oxygen. But you can only do that if you clean your tank. So let me ask you a question. If you see that kind of tank, how would you fix that tank? Well, what I would do is that I would take everything out of the tank I would clean the tank. I would replace everything in the tank. And then what I would do is clean the filter system that's broken. Because what happens if you don't fix the filter system, but you replace everything in the tank? What's going to come back? It does come back. Yeah. You're like, are you kidding me? I put new fish in here. I got the best food. Everything's brand new. And two weeks later, it comes back. Well, of course it is because you didn't fix the underlying problem. That's what medicine is. Yeah. Medicine goes after what's in the tank. And that's what we do. We go after something and then we think it's all good. Uh, not so much. You got to go down for the, and this, this was something I was looking for my entire career of always asking this question. Why in the world? And my, and when I do all these wonderful therapies, I do all these programs and people feel better, but it comes back. Why is that? Well, there's my answer, right? I have to get the tank. And then I'm talking, now let's talk about the other systems. So all those systems in your body, where do they live? Inside your fish tank. Even my nervous system lives in the fish tank. My brain lives in the fish tank. So I'm going to go after those other systems, but after what? What's the number one system? The lymph. Because once I clear the lymph out, and then I go after the other systems, it's a completely different result. As opposed to going after the other systems and not doing the lymphatic system, the filter system. Do you understand the big difference there? So when people ask me, Doc, what do you go after first? I just gave you the answer. The lymphatic system. I clean that tank and then I'm going to go after all of the other ones. So in my viewpoint, there's always a lymphatic component system to everything mm -hmm. i just have to figure out how much and more importantly make you aware of the system because if you want to change your lymphatic system the first step is the awareness that you have one and that you can <laughs> yeah absolutely right? yeah does yeah. that make sense it makes total sense and i love to hear you talk about it because it really sinks in when you describe it the way that you do and when you talk about it, it just, it makes you realize, gosh, why is it so ignored when it's so, so freaking important? And let me just backtrack to something you said um, quite a while ago. You were speaking about some of the symptoms that can come up, like bad skin, brain fog, um, symptoms that you wouldn't even relate to lymph. You just, you wouldn't even think about it. You wouldn't mm. make that connection. Um, it That it kind of explains why you, call yourself you put yourself under the name of stop chasing pain because basically what you're trying to say is you know if you're feeling pain or if you have any symptom um don't chase that 
Like that's not what you're looking at. You've got to look at the body as a whole, starting with the lymph, as you said. So, so what I want to ask you is, um, the lymph obviously played a huge role in your health because I can all of the passion that you have, you've got to have some personal experience with it. So, can you describe to, to put people um, into perspective of how the lymph can affect someone's health? Sorry, my emails. I didn't put it on silent. Um, uh, can you describe how the lymph um, affected your health and how you discovered it and what that journey was? And it can help people maybe find some um, kind of commonality there. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Well, I get asked this question a lot of what kind of symptoms can you have when you have mm. a lymphatic system issue? And here's my answer. Yes. <laughs> it means that honestly, you can have any type of symptom you can possibly think of. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, some of the bigger ones are pain chronic pain because you have too much inflammation in the body from yeah. the waste. And when you have all that waste in your body, guess what your immune system does? Attacks. It kicks into gear to try to kill all the waste that can't get mm -hmm. out. And you wonder why I'm always inflamed. Well, because your, your immune system is doing its job mm -hmm. actually. Right. Cause if that stopped working, you'd be dead quick. <laughs> so it's just trying to get rid of the waste. And I want to go over a term really quick because it will help explain what I'm going to show you, talk about in a moment. Um, when the fluid gets stagnant in your body and it doesn't move, um, stagnation, another word for stagnation is stasis. Something doesn't move, right? There's a condition called inflammatory interstitial stasis. Big fancy medical word. It means this. What's inflammation mean? Well, that means your body's trying to kill something. What's interstitial mean? That's the fluid between the cells. What stasis mean? Fluid that doesn't move. Basically, what I'm telling you is that when the fluids don't move in your body and the fluid that your cells live in are stagnant, you're going to get inflammation. And when you get inflammation, you get symptoms. Right. And, and it's important you, to yeah. note that the stagnation doesn't have to be where your symptoms are, mm. where you point which means that, hey, they point to my right shoulder and you think the inflammation is there. Well, that's a good guess, mm -hmm. right? It probably is, but you can have inflammation in the lymphatic system and other places of the body that are contributing to the shoulder. Yeah, and I was going to ask, when, when you say pain, this time. when you say pain, like you, you mean like it could be back pain, shoulder pain, hip pain, like yeah. just at any kind of pain you can think of, that's what you're referring yes. to. Any kind of pain in the body. Mm -hmm. All right. Particularly chronic pain. Right. Because you have to remember that when you have an acute injury, what do you create? Inflammation. Right. And you're trying to get blood flow to the injury and you're trying to get damaged cells away from the injury so it can heal. Right. Well, if your lymphatic system doesn't work well and your blood flow system doesn't work well, that's not happening. And then you're just going to go around and around and around. And we'll give some examples later so I can really send this home for you of how important it is. So here's what happened to me is that slowly over the years, I just began to deteriorate in my overall quality of life, even though I was doing everything that I know to do from exercise and training and nutrition. And I take care of myself, right? I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. How many people listening? This sounds familiar. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do, but I still got sick. Or when I got sick, I started doing everything I'm supposed to do, but I couldn't get better. And nobody could figure out why. Right. And so for me, I was like, I, slow, slow over time. And then until my quality of life began to go down, I was tired. I was fatigued. I was lethargic. I had memory issues. And then I started to get infections all the time. Well, infections are an immune system issue, right? If you name it, like almost everything on my body started to get infections. And one of the biggest ones that I got was what's called cellulitis. Anybody's ever heard of that? That's a very painful and debilitating condition where you get uh, infection around the cells of your body and it can spread up and it can kill you. And you're not supposed to get that. <laughs> and I got that four times in the span of two years. And the way that they take care of that is antibiotics but it doesn't mean they're fixing anything, right? So at the time, I didn't put the puzzle piece together yet. 
I will tell you right now, if you have uh, cellulitis, you got a lymph a lymphatic system problem, without question. Um, so, but for me, I got to a point <clears throat> where I couldn't function anymore, and I got even sicker, and I had to go through some traditional medical procedures because I felt like it was the only way I had out. But unfortunately, it made me worse. They didn't do it on purpose, but they're only they're doing the only way that they know how yeah. to take care of me, basically. <clears throat> and at the time, I wasn't even thinking about the lymphatic system myself because I didn't have cancer. Yeah. Why I, I didn't have lymphedema. I had cancer 20 years ago, which I didn't put the puzzle piece together yet. Of Maybe there's a relationship. But uh, basically, I just withdrew from life i had to quit practice i had to, to quit teaching and i was sleeping 14 15 hours a day just going from one day to the next and i realized you know what i've got to change something because whatever i'm doing and what everybody else is doing is not working so i said all right i'm going to scratch everything and i'm going to start from baseline and say i've got to look at the body the way nobody else is looking at it because they're missing freaking something and i was too so then I went back to um, basics and started to study physiology and stuff like that. And it's really interesting. The universe kind of opens up. As soon as I started doing that, a friend that I went to chiropractic school with who I hadn't spoken to in 17 years reached out to me and he was seeing some of my journey. And he said, Perry, it's been a long time and I know you're suffering. I said, listen, I'm going to a class in Europe on Friday. And this was a Wednesday to start to study energy medicine. And I think you might be open to it. And uh, I said, well, let me think about it. And he said, I'll put you in contact with the guy teaching the class. And I jumped on a Zoom call with him. And I said, you know what? I'll give it a shot. I got nothing else to lose. So I bought a ticket, flew out there and two days later. And during the workshop, they started to talk about the lymphatic system. And I never thought about the lymphatic system. And one of the things that happens when you have a poorly functioning lymphatic system were all the symptoms that I was having. A lot of congestion in the throat, post-nasal drip, right. mucus in the nose where I couldn't breathe through my nose anymore. A lot of brain fog, inflammation everywhere. I was clearing my throat every five seconds because yeah, I, I was having a, the protective response of the body laying down mucus to try mm -hmm. to kill stuff in your body. And uh, they brought me up into the front of the class because he said, I think that that's your issue. And he proceeded to check the lymph node regions that I check on everybody. And when he did that, every single area was just as painful as the next area. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe how much these hurt. Right. And here's the thing. This is the mind blower for me. I always knew about those areas and I was working on those areas, but I never thought that it was lymph that I was influencing. I'm going after Muscle, Muscles. fascia, ligament, joint, yeah. nerves. I'm going after everything else but that, not understanding that. You know there's lymph there too, right? So then I put that puzzle piece together. That's important to know because this is where it's really going to make a difference on where you work the lymph. You have to do it in a specific order to get these results. But three days afterwards when I was at the class, I felt 50% better, and I'm not kidding you. I was like, what? This is the craziest thing I'm unbelievable i don't know if it's in my head but i'm feeling better i got back home and then that was the string that i pulled in my life changed forever and i knew that i'm going to look at anything and everything about the lymphatic system i'm going to take it to a level that nobody's ever looked at it yes. before i started to get into it and i studied it from all different approaches eastern medicine western medicine osteopathic ayurvedic you name it right all sorts of different things and i mixed all of them uh together but it made sense when I started to study it because when I started to look at, okay, what do I need to get better? What does a cell need to get better? Well, it needs energy because it's all about energy. Well, how in the world does it get energy? Well, it needs blood flow, right? Because that's the only way it's going to get anything is through blood because mm -hmm. that gives it its nutrients. And how do you get your nutrients? Well, you eat them, right? Or you breathe it in. Mm -hmm. So you put it in, but it's got to get to the cell, right? So once it gets to the cell and the cell uses it, the cell makes what? Energy, which creates what? Waste. And then the waste now has to get out. Now I think, well, how does that got to get it out? Holy cow, it's got to get out through blood and it's got to get out through lymphatic system, right? 
if if that if that supply chain right there is disrupted, that's when you're going to get sick. And then I said, could it really be that simple? Yeah, it can be, because those are the first two fundamental principles of, listen, closely, of about a billion other processes happening, right? But those two have to happen first. So then um, when I learned about the limp, that it's part of the immune system, it's part of the waste management system, it's part of the blood flow system. And here's the take home. For so many things that I was doing, I was on the supply side of what a cell might need, which means that I'm putting nutrients in, I'm putting food in, I'm putting supplements in, I'm doing breathing exercises. Everything's in, 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 in. Yes. But I didn't go to the back end first and think, tank, dude, don't, yeah, that's better than putting crappy stuff in. I'll give you that. But how about you clean your filter system first? And then you do that. And oh my, that's what happened on that trip. And then I said, oh my goodness, I, I can't believe the difference here. And then now that I knew the signs to look for, I go back and I look at my prior Instagram feeds, my prior videos, my prior courses when I used to teach and get recorded. I'm like, oh, I see it everywhere. Look at my face. I look like a big giant walking puppy you know, lymph node. I could see it everywhere. Now that I know what to look for, I said, of course you're not feeling well because you're just swollen, right? But here's the cool part. I felt so much better in that. Now, I wasn't, I had a long journey to go. Let me preface that. But I also really struggled with losing weight, even though I know about nutrition and I do training and I know anything and everything to try to get rid of body fat, but I just could not do it. Within 30 days, I lost 30 pounds of combined inflammation, edema, swelling, and body fat. I look like a completely different human being, particularly in the face. Well, that's because you're flushing out all the toxins from the body. And the one thing that your body is designed to do is to protect you. Yeah. So if you have a lot of muck in your system, one of the ways the body will try to protect you is to swell you. Because mm -hmm. it's going to try to take all those things and surround it by fluid to disperse it. And it's going to pack on body fat. Mm -hmm. Because the body fat is a surrounder of toxins. Yeah. Because it's trying to keep it from going to the vital structures that are deeper. So you'll be superficially heavy in fat. Well, it can go deeper too into the visceral fat. But that's where you're swelling the container to disperse the tank. It's like taking a fish tank that's got muck in it and just throwing more water in the tank that looks crappy to try to make it not look so crappy, <laughs> you know, but it's still there. You follow? Totally. So you yeah. no matter which story I tell you, yeah, it's back to the same answer, which is what clean your fish tank. Right. And that's what lymphatic mojo is designed to do. Yeah. And um, listening to the way you describe it, it just, it, it gives me um, loads of energy and like excitement to kind of, do something about it and to, you know, make sure that my body is getting rid of, you know, all of the toxins and hopefully anyone listening feels that same feeling. Like when you talk, it's like, um, gosh, I want to cleanse myself. I want to feel clean. Like I want to get everything out. Um, so, I mean, you, you've been talking about lymph and at one point you said your head looked like a lymph node, which is brilliant. Um, yeah. I'm just still thinking about that one, but um, so you, you, so you talked about the, the lymph nodes and how they're the guys who kind of check the toxins, yeah. um, and where the lymph nodes are located is a really key part of looking at what the lymphatic system is mostly interested yep. in. Um, you know, for example, you wouldn't find too many in the legs, right? <laughs> but as you move up in the body, they start to cluster, interestingly enough, they start to kind of gather a bit more and you're thinking, hmm, well, there's a reason why there's so many checkpoints in those areas. So could you tell us where you find these clusters of um, lymph nodes and why? 
That's a perfect question. Mm. I love it. <laughs> yes. So you got about 600 to 700, the number changes, right? But it's a lot of those little mini toilet lymph nodes, right? Here's an interesting. One third of that 700 lymph nodes are from the neck up, the collarbone up. Wow. Let's think about that for a moment. What, what does that mean when you hear that? That however you were designed knows that from the collarbone up, that's precious territory. I really got to take care of that because what lives up there? The brain, mm -hmm. the master controller, right? So I tell everybody this, if you have any problem in your body where you have pain, inflammation, or any symptoms, you always have to work the collarbone up for everything. You always have to work that. It's and you so say that to everybody. Pivotal. I don't care if you come in with a hangnail on your big toe. I'm going to tell you, you've got to work from the collarbone up with the lymphatics, right? The other place that it's located mostly is the skin. That's why people get a lot of skin issues because yeah. they have lymph issues. But by far, the largest accumulation of lymphatics in the body is the gut, wow. the abdomen. Now, why is that? Because they know that 70 to 80% of your immune system resides in your gut. So it only makes common sense that you would put the number one system in your immune system right there with it. So when you have gut issues, like a leaky gut, for instance, right? Irritable bowel disease, Crohn's, anything like that, then stuff is going to break through the gut lining and then the lymphatic system's job is to try to take care of it and kill it. So you automatically kick off the lymphatic system and your immune system right from the get-go, and then it can travel anywhere throughout the body and cause irritation. If you have lymphedema or a lymph issue, you have a gut issue. If you have a gut issue, you have a lymph issue, period. Zero discussion, no debate. It just depends on how much is there. Okay. And they're finding that lymphatic issues are actually a cause of Crohn's. So which came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, is the answer, right? And they're linking it to obesity, metabolic disorders, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, all sorts of things, right? But nobody ever checks the gut when they have pain. The only time they look at the gut when they have pain is if something is painful in the gut. Right. If I, but when you come in to see me and you point to an area of your body that hurts, what do I already know? I got to look at the gut, <laughs> right? So I'm going to go to the gut. So those three areas are where you have the largest amount of lymph and the largest lymph node in the body. The largest lymph node sits about three inches, two to three inches, which is about three to six centimeters above your navel, right in the middle of your gut. And if that guy gets backed up, the arms and the legs get backed up, right? So those clusters reside around the primary joints of your body, your hips, your knees, your shoulders, your upper neck, and your torso, your abdomen. Why are they there? Because here's the cool thing. They're like, okay, I got all this limp. Well, what moves it? two things movement moves lymph and the people say what type of movement every single one all movement moves lymph but walking is one of the best jumping up and down is probably a close second and so that makes sense because when you move you have to use what joints so you pump those clusters every time you move what happens if you don't move a lot well then you become stasis stagnant you don't move, right? And the other thing that moves lymphatics are breathing, particularly breathing from your abdomen or what they call diaphragmatic breathing. Mm -hmm. Because when that diaphragm moves, it increases and decreases pressure, particularly in the center of your abdomen. Holy cow, pressure moves what? Fluid. Mm -hmm. So you pump the lymph node, basically. And you move the whole body. What happens if you don't do breathing from your diaphragm? 
which most people don't do because of how they breathe and how they react to things in life that are stressful. You shut down the two primary modes that move lymphatics. You don't breathe well and you don't move often or you don't move a lot of yourself when you move. Mm -hmm. And then over time, the limp gets stagnant, right? And so that's why the movement and the breathing that are designed to move the limp may no longer be enough to move the limp because there's too much backed up. They're, they're too clogged. And you have to get in there and move it by hand. It's like the toilet, you know, sometimes when your toilet's stuck and you can keep flushing it a couple of times and you may get enough pressure to move it out, but sometimes that trick doesn't work. <laughs> and then it starts to come overflowing on the bowl. And then the only way you're going to get it out is to what? You got to use a plunger or you got to snake it. Well, that's what your hands are for. Your hands are your lymphatic plunger, but hang on for it. And all those areas where you have those lymph node clusters, get us guess what else travels right along with it? Blood flow and nerves. Together in a family, in an mm -hmm. ecosystem. So that's why when those lymph nodes get backed up and you get swelling around those areas, you compromise blood flow into things, blood flow out of things, nerve flow into things, nerve flow out of things. And you can get pain anywhere in the body because all those systems work together and they're in the tank. So that's why if we clear those regions that I created a method called the big six method, because you'll go on these six places and you will absolutely change your life. You're going to influence blood flow and nerve flow where everywhere mm -hmm. and everything changes when you open up those, we call them choke points. Free up the choke points. And then guess what? Your body can do what it's designed to do. Deliver the nutrients and the oxygen to someplace and deliver the waste away from someplace. So my approach is very simple. I just want to make sure that your supply chain highway system of stuff into things and out of things works first. Mm -hmm. Then we see what kind of changes the body makes. And a lot of times, many of the things that you're trying to help get better. All right. And when you describe when you describe where the lymph nodes are around the joints, like that was a huge aha moment for me. I was just like, God, of course, like your body is so intelligent. It's like, yeah, lymph gets around through movement. So put it around the joints. Like it just, it makes perfect sense. And I didn't even think of it that way, even though I've seen multiple diagrams like to actually hear it like that just makes me think, gosh, it just, it just shows how important it is. Um, so, I mean, if somebody was listening to this and like, hmm, do I have a lymph issue? Um, first of all, I'm guessing that you would say, yes. <laughs> like if you have any you, you are correct. symptoms, yes. You are correct. Um, but just say someone, just say somebody wanted something a bit more like, okay, but give me something tangible, like give me something to look out for. Um, what sort of, um, you've already gone over some symptoms, but what other things should they look out for right now? I mean, I'll give you just one example, you talking, um, I had, I, I got a cough like months ago and, um, I have had to clear my throat like every day since, and even on podcasts, like I, I had a podcast before you and I, I literally, I, I was coughing and then I, I couldn't talk. You're like, you know, when you talk through phlegm, it just sounds awful. Yeah. I'm just like, Oh God, this is embarrassing. Um, I had that. And it's just making me think now, like my body is building up this defense system in my throat mucus because it's trying to get something out. Um, so even now I'm thinking, gosh, I have a lymph issue. Like I, I need to work on this. So, mm -hmm. I mean, what sort of things should, what sort of things that people don't expect that they should look out for? Yeah, well, that's one of them right there, but yeah, symptoms right. that come on up and they don't seem to go away. Okay. So that's, just... prob that's probably the biggest one right there. Uh, brain fog is another big one. Mm. That's a huge one. And most yes. everybody has that because we got so many toxins in our body and toxins in the world and the brain, the brain pays the price because the brain needs about 25% of all the oxygen in the body. Mm. Right? That's a lot. And so 
that's why I tell people is that once you learn how to clean your filter system, um, then you clean your filter system on a daily basis, which is the big six that we teach people, which I'll be happy to teach you if we have the time. If we have the time, I definitely want to come to that. Um, but you've just mentioned something really important um, and you mentioned brain fog. Yeah. So can you just talk about um, the brain for a second? Because I, I, from my understanding, um, the brain has its own lymphatic system, or they call it the glymphatic system. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Um, so kind of, can you give, can you talk us through some of that? Because brain fog is such a huge problem. Yeah, probably the most simple way to think about that is kind of going back to that uh, drainage system mm. of the body, right? And l let me kind of explain it to you this way, and then it'll make sense. So when the lymphatic system uh, moves and drains, it's all based on pressure, because right? this will set the stage for the big six, too, and explain the brain. Um, let's talk physics a little bit, but not mind-numbing physics. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the phys physics property of how water moves. Just remember this key phrase, and you can figure anything out in the body in relationship to fluid. High pressure automatically wants to flow to low pressure because it's just the easiest way to do it, mm -hmm. right? If envision a, a dam holding back water. All the water is on one side, and there's <laughs> no water on the other side. If I lift the doors of the dam, all the water goes to the low pressure mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. In regards to blood flow and lymph flow, key thing for healing here, write it down or never forget it. Is the collarbone clavicle? Everything wants to go to your left collarbone and your right collarbone. In particular, your left collarbone is where 80% of fluids go, right? So if that's the lowest pressure, where would the highest pressure be? Probably the furthest distance away from the low pressure, right? Well, that's your hands and your feet and your brain. So everything in your feet and your hands and your head wants to go to the collarbone, okay? Now, as far as the brain goes, we know that the waste and the toxins from the brain drain to the collarbone through what they call deep cervical lymph nodes. We already know what lymph nodes are. Deep means it's way in there and cervical means neck. So if you're clogged at your collarbone or you're clogged in your neck, the brain stays clogged, right? Because the glymph, it's called glymphatics for glial cells. Glial cells are basically different cells inside the brain that are not neurons. They're actually part of your immune system for your brain. They're trying to eat and kill stuff up there too and get rid of waste, right? And then they're going to transport their stuff, guess where? To the same place, to the lymphatics and the veins and the neck. Now, think about this logically. Remember I mentioned about cells making waste? Now, if 25% of your oxygen goes to your brain, what does that tell you about the brain? It uses a lot of oxygen, which means it creates a lot of what? Energy, because it has to connect neurons to neurons. That's your thinking process. That's your wiring and firing. They call that the ability to create your life, or they call it neuroplasticity, where you can change the brain. But you're wiring and firing all the time, right? And when you do that, what are you making? Lots of cell poop, lots of neuron poop, and it sits in the brain. And what happens if it can't get out? Then the immune cells in the brain start to go even more ballistic, and you basically start to devour your own brain cells. And you get neuroinflammation, toxic inflammation. That's why you get Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, because the stuff that's in there can't get out. So that's why people who try to get themselves better and they do a lot of exercises, they get tired really fast because they make more waste the more stuff that they do, but the waste can't get out. So that's one of the reasons why, here's what's really interesting. One of the reasons that they found that some of the drugs that they created to help Alzheimer's didn't work so well is because 
they know that the um, there's particularly a protein in the brain called a tau protein or amyloid beta protein. You don't need basically it's just stuff that's stuck there, and they found some drugs that would help that stuff right to to begin to break those down. But they were very disappointed in the results of the drug because they didn't account for this. Yeah, you can you can get the protein to to go the drug to go out of the protein, but it's got to get out. The sewage line was not open. You follow? So this is one of the reasons why they're making such huge strides with lymphatics overall, because they recently discovered that you actually have some lymphatic system in the brain, right? It's called meningeal lymphatics. It's between the layers of the brain. And just recently, well, about a month ago, they actually found, dig this, I found a new lining of the brain that they never saw before. Wait. So we've known that there's three linings for for a long time, but there was a fourth one there. We just couldn't see it because we didn't have the technology for it. Or honestly, I'm going to tell you, we weren't looking for it. And then that one is more, and they call it a lymph-like layer. So we're even finding stuff now of how that's going to be more critical for draining the waste from the brain, right? Because many years ago, we didn't think that the brain had its uh, own lymphatic type system, which to me is crazy because if I know that this area is so important, why in the world would nature leave that that vulnerable, right? And so here's all you need to know is that if you start to work these big six, then you actually help your brain at the same time because everything's going to be able to drain to the exit point when it goes. So we have advanced lymphatic courses where we teach people how to do stuff specifically for the brain, working mostly from the rib cage up. And then those are the ones we use for people who've had uh, post-concussion syndrome, long COVID, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, MS, a lot of neurodegenerative disorders, right? Because they're all coming from the same damn thing, which is what? I got muck in my fist tank. I got whatever it is. It's just manifesting its symptoms in its own particular way. But the first step is to clean the fist tank. All comes back to the That's same thing, right? That's why you got to clean the sewer lines. Mm. Yeah. because If you don't clean the sewer lines, that's like, I always say too, it's like a sink that's mm. backed up and you got stuff in the sink. I, I could stick my hand in there and I could swirl my hand around in that sink all day long. But it's not going to fix anything because I have to clean what? The deeper pipes. And that's one of the issues that I have with people who just do dry brushing on the skin because that's only the top line of the sink. You got to go deeper. And the only way you're going to get that deep, the only way you're going to get there is just stick your hands in there and get it out. That's it. You can't get that with a dry brush. Right. Okay. So now we're on the topic of dry brushing. Um, let's talk about how someone can help themselves um, today, yeah. like and some things they can start to do to start getting that lymph working. Um, so, I mean, you said that cells, you know, cell waste and all, basically all waste from the body um, goes through the lymphatic system. So basically it's a daily practice, like daily um, it's good to have something in your routine that gets that lymph working. So not just movement, not just breathing correctly, but uh, there are other things that we can do, which, so you keep talking about the big six. And so anything that you can share with us that we can do today to help ourselves? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to do that. I'll mm -hmm. show you how to do the big six and I'll show you what to do after that. But before that, this is really important that I tell you this before we begin, mm -hmm. right? Um, before you do the big six or any type of lymphatic work, you have to make sure that you're well hydrated. Right? So you have to drink uh, at least a glass or two of water before you do the big six. Right. And you have to make sure that you're currently not constipated, which means you had a bowel movement within the last day or so. Because if you're constipated, I already know you have waste inside of you. And when we work the lymphatics and I work blood flow, guess what I'm going to stir up? waste and it's going to make a beeline say oh my god we're awake where are we going to go it's got to get out 
and it's going to get out through breathing it out, sweating it out, peeing it out, and pooping it out. So I don't want you to be constipated because then you're going to not feel so great because the waste doesn't have a way to get out. And I need you to hydrate because I need to urinate. I also want you to expect that when you start to do this work, it seems ridiculously simple, but it's one of the most powerful things that you're ever going to do. And you can have what they call a detoxification reaction. That means your body and immune system has to react to the toxins that are there in order to get them out, which means this, you can feel worse before you feel better. You can be tired, fatigued, lethargic. Your symptoms can get temporarily worse. Your pain might temporarily get worse. You may smell bad. Your skin may break out, but guess what? Better out than in. Mm -hmm. So I just want you, I'm saying that for two reasons. One, I don't want you to get really nervous if it happens. But two, to expect that it probably will happen. And if it does, I don't want you to do another big six lymphatic reset until your body begins to feel a little better and can start to recover from that because you don't want to keep pushing stuff on it when it's trying to recover because you'll overload yourself and you'll prolong the healing process. So you may do a big six and, and can't do it for two or three days later. Some people may do a big six and feel freaking fantastic and they can go right into it and do it again, right? Everybody's a little bit different. So you may get that reaction and you may not. Either way, it's okay. You guys got that? That's really important to understand before I show you this. So when I show you the big six, you can honestly use anything on the big six. You can use brushing. You can use your hand, which I typically use the most, or any type of thing that you want. Those are just different techniques. But the concept that is a non-negotiable is you never change up the order, right? That's written in stone because it's just based on how fluids move. So spot number one never changes. Spot number one is where you're going to rub and massage or tap. I don't really care what you do to it. Just don't cause pain when you do it. Okay? Is below and above the collarbone on both sides. So I tell people, put your hands on a collarbone and massage above it and massage below it. You can go in circles. You can do different shapes. I mean, you can do hieroglyphics there. I don't care what you do. And then they say, how long? There's no magical time. It's just whatever you feel is good. Usually you can get in, do a really nice job freeing that up about 30 seconds to a minute, right? And then you can actually lightly tap in that region. Just tap your hand over it because that's going to move fluid, right? Then you do the same thing on the other side. You just rub above and you rub below. Circles are probably one of my favorites. And try different depths. Go a little bit deeper, a little bit lighter, a little bit faster, a little bit slower. You change it up. So now when you open that up, everything else is going to start flowing in easier because you just opened up the main drain, right? Now we're going to go to spot number two. Spot number two is the largest lump node in the neck. And it's going to sit on the left and on the right. And it's right at the top of the neck, on the side of the neck, behind the angle of your jaw and below the lobe of your ear in that little spot. The so you rub small. right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's one of the most important places in the entire body. I can't even tell you how much stuff comes out of your head right there. Right. And then do the same thing on the other side, moving in different patterns, different circles, stuff like that. And then you can lightly tap with your fingers. If you don't like tapping and it feels uncomfortable, then double your rubs. All right. Now your brain's going to start to drain. Your face is going to start to drain and your ears are going to start to drain. Right? Now we're going to go to spot number three. We do it at the shoulder joint. So you place your hand right over where your shoulder attaches to your pectoral muscle. So you see how your shoulder is round? Yeah. And then you come forward and there's mm -hmm. no more around. That's where I want you to rub with your whole hand. Put your whole hand over that region and go 
on the chest and underneath the pec into your armpit a little bit, right in that region. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then hit that whole region with your hands. Like that. Yep. Use the whole palm. Get in there. Right. There you go. Now do the same thing on the other side. Because now you're freeing up what they call pectoral slash axillary lymph nodes. And where do you think those are draining to? The collarbone, mm. right? The collarbone. And you can't feel That's the lymph nodes. Memory. Like you're, you're not expecting to feel anything. You just, you know, no, it deep. feels like you're not doing anything, but actually you are, trust us. Oh, well, like, you are. You're doing yeah. a ton. Okay. Yeah. You're doing a ton. <laughs> yeah. Now you're going to go to number four. Number four is the abdomen. So I tell people, put both hands flat on your abdomen, one above the other. So it's stacked like mm. this. Okay? Then all I want you to do is start to rub your hands up and down, side to side, press into the abdomen a little bit and do nice massage circles in different directions. It's kind of a bit nauseating, that one. Like just so <laughs> the solar plexus. It's like, well. yeah. <laughs> and then now take your hands and pat your belly about 10 to 15 times. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to go to the crease of your groin. When mm -hmm. you sit down and you have this crease in your pant line right there, mm -hmm. I want you to rub along the whole crease of the groin. You can go up, you can go down, you can go across, you can do in circles, right? Mm -hmm. That's a very sensitive area there. So go easy. And then do light tapping on the crease of the groin as well. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a made guess where all the blood flow to your legs come from. Uh right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I figured. <laughs> yeah. And then now the last one, number six, is behind the knees. Mm -hmm. Rub behind both knees, above and below the crease, and in different circles, and then slap the back of your knees. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't take a long time, does it? I mean, you, you no. can do it in I like I mean, when you're minutes. in a pinch, you can do it each one, 10 seconds, bing, bang, boom, good to go, easy peasy, mm -hmm. I call it. And is it every day, and then morning, night? from the there, way? yeah, I'll tell you that in a second. Okay. So when you clear those up, now you open up the big choke points. If you want to go back and dry brush now, now you can dry brush from the feet up and the hands up. Mm -hmm. Right? Then... I want you to get up and move. The easiest way to do that is just stand up and jump up and down a little bit on the balls of your feet, shaking out your hands, shaking out your legs, like you're jumping around like a fighter in a ring or you're doing a little mini jump rope. Mm -hmm. Or you just go for a walk, either one. So you open up the flow pipes and then you move the mm. flow pipes. And there's no best time of day to do that. I'll give you a few options. Most people like to do it in the morning because you have the longest period of inactivity at night when you sleep. So people become very stagnant. And then you get tightness or stiffness. And if it's really hard for you to get moving in the morning, that's a classic indication of stagnated lymphatics. So mm -hmm. you stand up and you do the big six right there. But I would drink a water first because you're dehydrated most likely when you wake up. Drink yourself a glass of water. And then do your big six, lightly jump up and down on the balls of your feet for 30 seconds. You're going to be an absolute monster. Mm -hmm. You'll own the whole day. Now, some people like to do it at night before they go to bed. Some people don't because it wakes them up. But I tell people, you do both ways and choose the one that works best for you. Mm -hmm. And you may find that one day I like to do it in the morning, one day I like to do it at night. But once a day is typically enough. But you can also use this in your workouts and with athletics. So I tell people this. Let's think about this logically. When you're about ready to go train and move, you need to get what moving? Blood flow. Well, that's a great way to do it. You hit all those six places. Then you do your other warm-up routine after that. Mm -hmm. Right? Plus... When you slap all those joints, you just gave what they call proprioceptive neurological input to your joints because you just slapped them. So your brain now knows where your primary joints are because you just slapped it. So you're going to be harder, faster, stronger, longer, and you're going to have less of a chance of getting hurt because you have more body awareness. That's called checking the wind box right mm -hmm. there.
and stay with me. When you exercise and you train, what do you make? Cellular waste because you are on purpose destroying mm -hmm. cells so you can grow bigger, stronger, more resilient ones so you can make bigger muscles. Mm -hmm. But when you do that, you create what? Waste. So let me ask you a question. Could you do your big six after you train? So now you get rid of the metabolic waste faster, have less soreness from your routine. You can go back to training sooner and do what you love more before and after your training. That's a fantastic combination. Once you understand what you're doing. Now, it seems when you're doing that, like, doc, I feel ridiculous. This Seriously, what's this doing? I just told you the, the neurology and the physiology of why this stuff is so powerful. And one of the biggest reasons that this is so powerful is because the order you did it in. That's a vastly different experience than just finding body parts and slapping yourself because you want to warm yourself up. Because I need you to always, this is how I think, I need you to always envision in your mind, whatever I do to the body, how is it influencing how fluids move? Once you can picture that, then you should become very strategic on where you work first, second, third, and fourth. Let me give you an example. Let's say that somebody comes on in and they have chronic pain, inflammation, or whatever you got in a right foot. Maybe you have some itis, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis. Am I doing okay on time? Do I have a moment Perfect. to I've go got this? time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got an itis. What does that tell you? Itis means inflammation. So let's think about our supply chain. That foot is injured. It needs to heal. First thing it has to do is get rid of the swelling and the inflammation and waste that's there and get it out. Where does the waste from your ankle need to go? You should be pointing to spot number one on your collarbone, particularly the left side. The feet drain to the left side of the neck. Now. For that foot to heal, it needs blood flow, nutrients, all that good stuff. Where does that come from? Higher up. It's got to come down the same way the other ones come up. They pass each other and wave to each other on when they're going by. Hey, buddy, what's up? Right? But in order to get to the collarbone, what lymph node clusters does it have to get past? the back of the knee, the crease of the groin, your abdomen, and it's got to go up to the collarbone. So let me ask you a question. What happens if you have a block in the back of your right knee and groin and abdomen that you don't know about because it doesn't hurt you and nobody ever told you to check for a block? Well, you're going to treat the ankle. And the ankle's like, that's awesome, man, but guess what? I can't get stuff out. I can't get stuff in. Why don't you do the big six first, then come back and take care of me? That's a vastly different experience, my friend, because now when I treat the ankle, I'm going to have blood flow rushing there like you wouldn't believe. And that waist is going to be zippity doo -dah. This is awesome, man. I got a beeline straight to his collarbone. In my world, that means this. Never, ever, ever. Ever, never, ever treat any part of the body until I clear the big six first because I got to open up the supply chains. If you do that, that's not a small thing. That is everything. And I will contend that that might be the very reason why everything that you're doing to that one side is not getting better because that's what stop chasing pain means. Mm. First of all, if you're right foot hurts, don't just treat your right foot. You have to look at what? The whole system. Have to make sure that the blood flow 
on my left side works too. Because I often find that people have blood flow restrictions on a side they didn't know about, and that's the reason they have pain on the opposite side. And you're like, how in the world would I know that? You don't have to. All you got to do is one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. That's it. Then do everything else. It's an absolute mind blower life changer. And I know it because every single day of my life, I can't tell you how many messages I get from people that tell me so. Um, gosh, I'm definitely going to include it in my routine. <laughs> after that, I'm thinking, right, big six after this conversation, just, just give it a go. Um, and I love how you mentioned before because um, a lot of my followers is you know want to look and feel their best and I love how you referred to earlier in the conversation you referred to how it helps obesity and weight loss and then recently you mentioned how well look if your lymphatic system is working well then you can work harder in the gym you know it can help build your muscle and it can help you you know become more athletic become fitter and um, and, and that is, is everything to people who are wanting to, you know, look their best. And I really love how you've made that link there. You know, if someone wants to have, you know, the body they've always wanted, you know, lymphatics come into that as well, because a healthy person can work harder basically in the gym. Um, so I really love that connection you made something, Thank crossed, you. something crossed my mind. Um, the, People talk about trampolining. I mean, that's a real trend right now. Would you back that trend? Would you say that's a good idea? It can be. It can be. You have to be yeah. careful with that for a couple of reasons. What happens if you jump up and down, but you didn't clear the big six first? Mm. Yeah. All you're doing is moving the stuff around. You're not getting it out because jumping up and down is not going to be enough to unblock the big six. Mm -hmm. Remember I said you got to get in, you got to what? You got to move it. You got to get mm -hmm. your hands in there. So I tell people this, always do the big six, then trampoline. Perfect. Yeah. And don't trampoline for too long. Mm. Why is that? Because trampolining is really uh, influences the balance system of the body called your vestibular system and your mm -hmm. inner ear. And if you have a poorly functioning lymphatic, uh, excuse me, vestibular system in your ear, um, you can send your body through a pretty big stress response and uh, not do very well with that. And it's not just doing lymphatics. It's can your body tolerate the lymphatics that you're doing? That's mm. why the big six is good because it's a quick in and out, right? When, when you jump up and down like that for 15, 20 minutes, sometimes that can be a lot, right? Yeah. So I usually introduce people slowly into work when they do that. And then, you know, you have built in trampolines already. They're called calves. Mm, yeah. You just jump up and down a little bit on the balls of your feet. You don't have to leave the ground. Mm -hmm. You just do little mini calf pumps where you're not jumping off the, the ground. But I tell people this, if you can try this experiment, if you trampoline now, I want you to trampoline and then see how you feel. And then the next time I want you to do the big six and then trampoline mm -hmm. and you'll discover for yourself what I'm talking about. It's a different experience when you do it, right? And what's also important about the lymphatics is they also transport hormones. Right. So many people have hormonal issues because they're loaded with stress hormones. Yep. And so when they're loaded with stress hormones, that breaks down the body. You still hear me okay? Yep. Just plug again. Okay. Yeah. The They'll, uh, and most of your hormones in your body actually are in your gut. Your neurotransmitters, neuro means brain transmitters, are from the gut, like serotonin and dopamine. And then you have your liver that sits there. Now, the liver is really important because it has this thing called estrogen in there, mm -hmm. right? It's supposed to remove estrogen. Now, most people have a stagnated liver because they're on this earth. And they have what they call a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because they eat too much sugar. Mm -hmm. But the, the liver contributes, get this, 
up to 50% of the lymphatics to the largest lymph node in your body, in your gut. So let's think about this. What happens if you have a blocked lymph node in your abdomen, you have blocked lymph in your gut, and you have an overburdened liver that is now producing too much lymph and that can't get out? Well, you're going to stay toxic, puffy, and bloated. You're going to stay with your body fat increasing, and you will have too much estrogen in the body. And then when you have the estrogen in your body, you become very estrogenic. Mm. And then what happens is, guess what kicks in? Immune system. Mm. Then you get body fat deposition around where estrogen likes to send it, and women don't like it. Hips and thighs. When you do the big six and you work deep in that abdomen and you do some of the advanced work that we show you, then you can make a big difference mm. in the body. But then, I mean, I could spend five days showing you how all these systems interact with each other and how one thing here makes a difference on these 15 things down here being able to work because they all have these, these interactions and uh, relationships with each other, right? But when you go into medicine right now, your gut guy is not going to talk to you about lymphatic. I can tell you that right now. No, it's for sure they ain't going to mm -hmm. talk about it. And they should. So that kind of leads me to think, um, like we've talked about lifestyle and ways that you can move to kind of help with the lymphatic system. But then um, does, does diet come into this and alcohol and can they affect the function? Because obviously you said that most of them are in the gut, right? So... Yep. Um, what sort of foods do we need to be avoiding um, to avoid that puffy kind of look? You mentioned carbohydrates and is, is that linked to the lymphatic system, like the inflammation and then they get blocked? And... Yeah. Okay. Big time. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the nutrient supply, right? Mm. And I, I make it pretty simple in the beginning because if I tell most humans, stop eating crap food mm. and eat better food, most people know what that means. Mm. Stop the junk food, the sugar for sure. If I could tap anything out on you, it will be sugar. And watch your uh, long chain fatty acids, mm. right? We got those are the processed oils right. that you have that's going on, right? Um, and they're pretty much like canola oil. All the they're Beef pretty oils. much in everything anyway. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, then your your processed foods of all different types. If you can just eat less of those and more of everything else, because that's also more doable for you in the long haul. Mm -hmm. um, most people can do anything short term, but you need to look long term for yourself. Right? Those are probably the two biggest ones are the sugar and the long chain fatty acids. Right. That's because the lymph transports long chain fatty acids. What happens if your lymphatic system's taking a hit? Mm -hmm. Then you can't transport long chain fatty acids and then you got to break down your body. That's mm -hmm. why you want to have more short chain or medium chain uh, fatty acids. And if you want to know what those are, you can Google search that. It'll tell you quick, fast, and in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the other one would be uh, dairy watch right. the dairy and the reason is the dairy is because of the protein right in the dairy and, and how is because the protein different from other proteins yeah well it's like a dairy based whey protein and it's okay. highly inflammatory mm. to the body many people have an underlying allergy towards a dairy type proteins mm. and i'm going to give you one guess at which system in the body is the primary system to eliminate proteins in the body Oh gosh, I'm gonna draw a blank here. Yeah. It starts with an L and ends with M. Lymph. Yeah. If your lymphatic system's taking a hit, then you're also not gonna be able to get rid of the excess proteins in the body. Mm -hmm. Then the protein stays inside the body. And then guess what? It's not supposed to. Then your immune system kicks into gear. And it looks at the proteins as an outside invader and it kicks up inflammation. Mm -hmm. So people take in the protein all day long, but they can't get rid of it. And then it just 
for instance, for me, uh, I'm a, I've been in bodybuilding since I was 14 and I was eating protein like crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was slamming whey protein because it's in everything. But whey protein can be highly inflammatory to keep people because it's dairy based. Mm -hmm. When you have a poorly functioning lymphatic system, whey protein is going to destroy you. You will not do well with that at all. That's why I usually do uh, collagen powder, collagen based grass fed powder. Right. That also helps strengthen the lymphatic channels when you take the collagen. Um, any other supplements you recommend? Well, that's probably uh, the top one right there is the lymphatic one. And then, um, you know, I like for people to have a nice um, spectrum of electrolytes, cell salts, mm. or minerals okay. in the body. Right. So right. The, most people are very depleted on uh, minerals and uh, cellular salts. Got it. Got it. That's one of the reasons why they can't absorb water well. Yeah, Those would be one of the, the top top three right there. Many times with nutrition is, is very individual. Right. right. But most of the time when I give nutritional advice, I tell people this is not so much what you start doing, but what you stop doing. And what do you mean by that? Like I said before. Yeah. Stop eating the crap. That's right. Yeah. The sugar, the long chain fatty acids, mm -hmm. and then it's what every diet book on the earth tells you. Because it's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you it's, just it's not rocket there. science, is it? It's you know. Honestly, it's, it's really it's not. Quite kind of obvious. But it's it's fundamentals and basics. It. It's fundamentals and basics over the long haul. Mm. Wow! Thank you so much. Um, I gosh, there's there's so much information there, and I know that everyone listening is they definitely have the big six in their routine, and there's just so much to to take from this conversation. Um, just to finish, is there anything that we haven't covered that you think? Oh, I think everyone should need everyone should know this or do you think you've covered everything well not everything for sure yeah, okay. i mean i i mean I, I teach, everything you can course, cover in, an, in uh, a podcast that is that's two days long and about 16 hours yeah I mean, i'll melt yeah. your brain you'll know more about length than most people on this earth uh, mm -hmm. when you're done but yeah because that's a good start what the one thing i i, I as i've tried to develop uh, as a teacher over the years is that it's not so much teaching you things to learn, mm -hmm. but teaching you things that you can use. Because if you want to learn about the lymphatic system, just go to Google and start reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is to teach you things that can be very useful for you and uh, an easy entry into making a change in your body. And the big six would be it. If you can uh, make sure that you keep yourself well hydrated for sure then begin to get the big six introduction for you what you'll find is that you're going to change your and get more movement you're going to find that it makes a change to your entire entire fish tank and then that's the person who says doc i don't know if it's related or not but i'm sleeping way better yeah it is related. Of course it will, right? Or, you know, I, I feel like I can go longer without getting as tired or fatigued when I'm at work. Or when I, you know, I'm, I, I'm able to play with my kids longer where I couldn't do that before. So this is not just about helping your pain. It's, it's making a difference in all aspects of your life that you may not have even noticed anymore have slowly deteriorated. And your sense of normalcy has changed its thermostat mm -hmm. because it's just the, well, I've always had this. I've always had that, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden when you do this and you, those change, you go, wait a minute, I'm feeling better. This is great. Right. And you just get in that muck to move. And then when you finally have the better blood flow and waste out, you start to get a little bit more of this energy. And then, when you have the energy, then comes what? The motivation. Mm -hmm. 
to do more. I mean, people want to change, but they can't change because I'm like, I just can't get motivated. And I'm going to tell you, it's likely not your fault because you have cells that just can't get motivated. Why? Because they don't have blood flow and oxygen. They can't get rid of muck. I wouldn't want to do anything either. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, in a short period of time, here's my challenge. Try to do the big six every single day for 30 days. Or skip the days when you feel like you need to take a break. Just once for 30 days. Then you'll see what I'm talking about. Because I guarantee you, you're going to be in a different place than you are right now. Okay, hey, done. And and just to finish, um, there's there's a saying that comes to mind when you're talking about motivation. Um, it's not motivation you need, it's momentum. So as soon as somebody sees results, then it's like, hey, this stuff really works. And then the momentum just keeps them going. So um, just do those 30 days, see what happens, and then find that momentum. And then and then you're away, like on your journey, oh. on your health journey. It's brilliant. I love that. That is yeah. brilliant. You're yeah. so right there. Yeah. Right? And then it's even better when you share that with other people or you do big six with your family or people that you uh, are around. Mm -hmm. It's even better, that, that connection. And usually people will see and go, what in the world are you doing over there? You know, and then you can tell them, you explain it to them. And then it's really easy to explain. All you just say was, Hey man, you ever had a fish tank? And you just tell them the fish tank story. And the rest Don't is worry. history. <laughs> All right. That's the only story I needed to tell anybody. Cause if I showed anybody a, a fish tank of a really nice fish tank and then show them a picture of a fish tank that looks disgusting. Mm. All you have to do is say, which one of these would you rather live in? Any sane person is going to tell you the nice one. And then you're going to say, well, guess what? I'm about ready to show you how. Dun, dun, dun. Easy. <laughs> there we go. Off they go. <laughs> That's it, right? That's all you got to do. The, here's the thing. People don't even know they're living in that kind of fish tank. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, th I think that basically wraps everything up. Um, I feel almost silly asking you what's the best way to um what's the best way to find you online because i'm sure you're everywhere everyone knows where to find you um but do you do you have a favorite place that you like to promote you're just like yeah just go to this place or is it just like just find me like you'll find me yeah, <laughs> yeah well probably the easiest way to find me is on stopchasingpain.com right. <clears throat> that will be the central hub to mm -hmm. all of my things because i'm on almost every social media platform but by far, my favorite is Instagram. Yep. I'm on there the most. And at this point, some might call it an unhealthy relationship <laughs> with Instagram. But I don't think so because it's got a great community on there and such a wonderful energy. And I love being yeah. on that as well. Those two places, <laughs> you'll, yeah. you'll typically find me somewhere. That's without a doubt. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I promise I'm going to wrap up in one second, but I just wanted to say yeah. there's one video that I saw that you did recently that actually made me laugh because um, it's brilliant. Um, the girl who had the tongue on the roof of her mouth, no, like down at the bottom of her mouth and her throat was like like that. And then she put it to the roof of her mouth and her chin yeah. just chiseled. And then you came in, you were like, boom. <laughs> Yeah. And then you just, and that was like, I was just like, oh, oh, oh. when I saw that, I thought that was funny. So yeah, keep going with yeah, Instagram. Thank you. It's great. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny one. My director of operations, Louisa, sent me that uh, video because mm. I talk about the tongue a lot and how mm, it can yeah. uh, have a course specifically on the tongue and how it, it can even change how your lymph moves. But she sent that picture. I'm like, that's the coolest thing it I've ever amazing. seen. It was amazing. I was doing it yeah. in the mirror, and even I can't do that. Like, I can't do what she did. It was just oh, amazing. I, I'm trying it, too. Yeah, but you yeah, got to like... have wicked practice to get to that yeah. point because she, she owns it. Yeah. But and I said, oh, let me put that up there. And that was – it was fun for me because that was honestly the very first video where I've done one of those splits where yes. you can – sometimes yeah. you can – follow along with the video at the same time yeah but then otherwise you can come in after the video and talk about it right right and uh yeah and i did and it that worked. one it yeah was, it, was, it, it worked it was a lot of fun yeah honestly 
Yeah, yeah. Because I couldn't do, do that. The, yeah. I couldn't do the side by side because I'm like, wait a minute, my chin is not. <laughs> so, yeah, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have carried off very well. Like it, it just no. people have been like, what's Perry doing? I don't understand this video, yeah. but it was good. Yeah, you did it well. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank um, you very much. No worries. Um, anyway, Perry, oh my gosh, thank you so much. That was brilliant, and um, I really hope we get to do this again soon. Like that'd be brilliant. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Bye.